Omnimon and I am welcome back. I was making some other videos and in them I mentioned Lord Shiva and Lord Ganesha and I realized I didn't have an elephant in those videos. So I decided to bring an elephant into this one, though he's completely unrelated. This is Ernest. He's my girlfriend's elephant, named after Ernest Hemingway, who she really likes. Ernest will be joining us today as we read chapter 25 in Canto 4. This is called The Descriptions of the Characteristics of King Purananja. I will only be reading the first half of this. The great sage Maitreya continued speaking to Vidura. My dear Vidura, in this way Lord Shiva instructed the sons of King Barisat. The sons of the king also worshipped Lord Shiva with great devotion and respect. Finally, Lord Shiva became invisible to the princes. All the Prasetta's princes simply stood in the water for ten thousand years and recited the prayers given to them by Lord Shiva. While the princes were undergoing severe austerities in the water, their father was performing different types of fruitive activities. At this time, the great saint Narada, master and teacher of all spiritual life, became very compassionate upon the king and decided to instruct him about spiritual life. Narada Muni asked the king, My dear king, what do you desire to achieve by performing these fruitive activities? The chief aim of life is to get rid of all miseries and enjoy happiness, but these two things cannot be realized by fruitive activity. The king replied, O great soul, Narada, my intelligence is entangled in fruitive activities. Therefore, I do not know the ultimate goal of life. Kindly instruct me in pure knowledge so that I can get out of the entanglement of fruitive activities. Those who are interested in a so-called dutiful life, namely remaining as a householder, entangled by sons and a wife and searching after wealth, think that such things are life's ultimate goal. Such people simply wander in different types of bodies throughout this material existence without finding out the ultimate goal of life. The great Saint Narada replied, O ruler of the citizens, my dear king, Please see in the sky those animals which you have sacrificed without compassion and without mercy in the sacrificial arena. All these animals are awaiting your death so that they can avenge the injuries you have inflicted upon them. After you die, they will angrily pierce your body with iron horns. In this connection, I wish to narrate an old history connected with the character of a king called Paranjana. Please try to hear me with great attention. Once in the past lived a king named Paranjana, who was celebrated for his great activities. He had a friend named Avijanata, which translates to the unknown one. No one could understand the activities of Avijanata. The king began to search for a suitable place to live, and thus he traveled all over the world. Even after a great deal of traveling, he could not find a place just to his liking. Finally, he became morose and disappointed. The king had unlimited desires for sense enjoyment. Consequently, he traveled all over the world to find a place where all his desires could be fulfilled. Unfortunately, he found a feeling of insufficiency everywhere he went. Once, while wandering in this way, he saw on the southern side of the Himalayas a place named Bharata Varsha, today known as India, a city that had nine gates all about it and was characterized by all auspicious facilities. That city was surrounded by walls and parks, and within it were towers, canals, windows, and outlets. The houses there were decorated with domes made of gold, silver, and iron. The floors of the houses in that city were made of sapphires, crystals, diamonds, pearls, emeralds, and rubies. Because of the luster of the houses in the capital, the city was compared to the celestial town named Bogavati. In that city, there were many assembly houses, street crossings, streets, restaurants, gambling houses, markets, resting places, flags, festoons, and beautiful parks. All these surrounded the city. On the outskirts of the city were many beautiful trees and creepers encircling a nice lake. Also surrounding that lake were many groups of birds and bees that were always chanting and humming. 
The branches of the trees standing on the bank of the lake received particles of water carried by the spring air from the falls coming down from the icy mountain. In such an atmosphere, even the animals of the forest became non-violent and non-envious like great sages. Consequently, the animals did not attack. Over and above everything was the cooing of the cuckoos. Any passenger passing along the path was invited by that atmosphere to take rest in that nice garden. While wandering here and there in that wonderful garden, the king suddenly came in contact with a very beautiful woman who was walking there without any engagement. She had ten servants with her, and each servant had hundreds of wives accompanying him. The woman was protected on all sides by a five-hooded snake. She was very beautiful and young, and she appeared very anxious to find a suitable husband. The woman's nose, teeth, and forehead were all very beautiful. Her ears were equally very beautiful and were bedecked with dazzling earrings. The waist and hips of the woman were very beautiful. She was dressed in a yellow sari with a golden belt, and while she walked, her ankle bells rang. She appeared exactly like a denizen of the heavens. With the end of her sari, the woman was trying to cover her breasts, which were equally round and well placed side by side. She again and again tried to cover them out of shyness, while she walked exactly like a great enemy. The king became attracted by the eyebrows and smiling face of the very beautiful girl and was immediately pierced by the arrows of her lusty desires. When she smiled shyly, she looked very beautiful to him, who could not refrain from addressing her. So we're going to pause here just before the conversation gets started. Seems like a, a decent place to pause. I laughed to myself for a moment. Um, there's a YouTube channel I really like called Better Bachelor. Highly recommended if you're single and you're dating, whether you're a man or a woman. And it's this guy, I think he's in Oregon. He's in his 50s and he's given up on dating and now he does a YouTube channel talking about dating and men and women and it's kind of focused on men but it it really is for everyone because it talks about how different they are and what they want and the current dating scene and I'm not single but I find dating is a reflection of society so I love watching it but one thing that comes up over and over again is dating someone who is older and has baggage and it may not necessarily be baggage but it just might be things that you got to deal with and and how it really can hurt you in the marketplace in the dating marketplace and um it's a great channel i'll put a link down below because it is well worth watching but i read this line here where it said she was walking along with uh 10 servants with her so we have one woman and 10 servants and each servant had hundreds of wives first of all that's a really um but I never really think of servants as having hundreds of wives, so these are more than servants. But let's say each one has uh, 200 wives. That's 200 times 10. That is a lot of people to be walking down the street. <laughs> I am just going to say, what? That's kind of impossible. But besides the improbability of it, my thought was, well, if you date this woman because she's looking for a husband, that's a lot of baggage. It's one thing to say, oh, so if I live with you, I'm going to have to have your mother move in with us. It's another to say, I'm going to have to have your ten servants and their thousand wives with, live with us. <laughs> Sorry. I just I, The things that pop into my head sometimes as I'm... As I'm going along and reading this, just come out of nowhere, I know, and they're not necessarily spiritual, but that's life. That's the way it goes. So, with that really bad joke and that really bad thing, I just have nothing else to say right now, because this is just setting up a story. Oh, um, one more thing on the woman. She also comes with a five-footed snake, so you get your own pet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, this isn't what you chimed in for, Ernest, I know. Anyways, I'm going to stop here, and we'll pick up the conversation, and we'll pick up the story in the next video. Thanks for hanging out with me. Harry Krishna, Harry Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Harry Harry, Harry Rama, Harry Rama, Rama Rama, Harry Harry.